I know lots of journalists, and a couple of years ago, I had the, the chance to be able to chair the search for a new dean of journalism. And here was a public policy guy who was a dean helping the School of Journalism look for a leader in the middle of all this kind of stuff. And one of the things that was out of the mouths of the journalists constantly, this recurring sense that they had a mission, and their mission was to try to capture and distribute the truth. And given the debate over fake news and this big concern that we've got these days over not you can trust anything, I mean, uh, are we in a kind of a post-truth era at this point where the, the idea of truth just doesn't have any meaning anymore, where it, it's all relative, or is there something at the core that we really need professional journalists to do that has to do with finding a way to boil out the junk and get to something that constitutes facts and the truth? And the answer, of course, is yes, I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to say. But the question is, how in the middle of this crazy environment that we find ourselves in? Well, anybody can commit an act of journalism. <clears throat> you know, it's, if, if, you, if, you, if you have one of these and, and you're, you're able to use any of the apps, you can do journalism. And, and actually, it's been an amazing explosion in um, on-the-scene breaking news from folks like that. So where does a... Where does a paid professional journalist with an infrastructure around him or her come into play? I think there are at least two things, and I'm sure we can sit here and kind of make a whole list. But one is you need an infrastructure around the working journalist for protection and support. So our guys are physically at risk in their work, and also we get sued, and it's better if we get sued than if an individual freelancer gets sued, and those are facts of life in these days. And so an infrastructure of professional support around working journalists is, if, if anything, more important today. And two is... You develop an obsession, you develop an expertise, you develop your sources. I mean, I, I think Nick, you, and you would know this more better than I do, but, but you have to go deep on a story. You have to have this rich knowledge to explain the context within which the disparate events of the day take place. There's, that's information, but journalism is when you can knit it together into a story that's coherent and where you can confidently show your work and let it be tested by people. And then I think you're then I think you're justifying the existence of this kind of practice. Which really is getting to more than just this post, how many hits, it's the, yeah. the thing that comes after that and yeah. the thing that comes after that. Linda? I think there's a generally agreed upon sort of set of principles really in terms of verification um, and ethics that most mainstream organizations adhere to. Um, because essentially, it's, it's, you're in the business of trust. You're selling trust. You've got nothing else to sell there. And so you need to be you know, transparent in terms of your funding, which is becoming a bigger issue now because so many people have, or so many organizations have multiple funding sources. So you have to make very clear where the money's coming from. Um, but then you adhere to your principles, and you don't have anything else. So, and I think that, again, getting back to the Times and the Post, and yes, people read other things, but people are willing to pay for that. So there's some understanding out there that it's, it's a value. You're selling your stuff. So, they're, they, you know, everybody isn't willing to pay. Everybody doesn't understand, uh, you know, kind of what good journalism is. But there are enough people who do, and we need to spread the word better, I think. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Right. Well, I think yeah. I think pr principles are important. I think infrastructure is critical. People don't realize how expensive infrastructure is, and that's why there are half as many journalists today as there were ten years ago. Uh, the question is going to be how many people are willing to pay for these things, and how many things will you pay for? Can we have one national newspaper that does everything you want it to do? Two is not enough. Uh, we were talking today about how. Everything left of the Beltway, everything west of DC uh, could certainly use a lot more coverage, but who's going to pay for that? Um, I subscribe to 40 magazines, in part because I can write them off, and in part because this is the thing I'm most interested in. How many things will the average consumer support? We don't, we don't know the answer to that yet. And will they read news about what happens in, uh, in Annapolis, or in Sacramento, or in Austin? or in Springfield, and it's the decline especially of coverage at the state level that may put it the sharpest focus on what you've just said. At some point, because we're all in the attention game, 
technology also pushed us to the decision that news must also be entertainment. Um, and I don't know how we move back from that, but like the reason nobody wants to read what's going on in Sacramento is because it's really not as exciting as a million other things I can be doing right now. Um, is there some sort of like media literacy or something else that needs to be done uh, where we can just bring news back to the function that it used to serve? Well, you opened the door on that one. So I think the restoration of civics education in the schools and a modern curriculum is like absolute baseline, including a media literacy component would be a brilliant move. Any state that move, is first mover on that wins because they'll develop a constituency that'll enrich the cultural life of that state in ways that states that don't won't. So it's an investment in a future culture, a cultural capital of a community, I think. I'll tell you at least one thing by way of reassurance, and then I want to ask for questions from the audience, but uh, I did a session on fake news to a group of 125 students last Wednesday, and I, when, when I was just a pup, there was just no way that anybody would put their hand up in a class of 125, and they were all over it, hands just shooting up. Uh, in terms of what you're saying, there's certainly the audience there, and students desperately want to get in on this game. So there's, there's something to be done here on this, because they are concerned about the same stuff that, uh, that we've been talking about. And I showed them the graph about the spread between Republicans versus Democrats trusting the news, and they were sitting back there, and they were worried. And they were starting, and some of them were saying, are there data points in between? They're, they're, they're freshmen pulling this graph apart. They're, they're worried folks. And so there's an audience for what you're talking about somehow. If we can find a way to put the pieces together, because there's a sense there that, there's a sense that the things are not, maybe not quite right. 